Those are your tools from now on, soldier. Take a good look at them. 30 caliber rifle and machine gun. It comes in three kinds. Armor piercing, tracer, and ball. The penetrating force is the same. Murderous. The rifle slug just blasts through steel as if it were brown paper. And here we are, about 70 years later, and here is an M2 30 caliber armor piercing round. Seems to be one of the most widely available armor piercing rounds, and uh, so I just thought it'd be a good one to benchmark other rounds against as I work my way through them. By the way, stopping one of these is a specification for Type 4 body armor. So I believe these rounds were adopted around 1940 or maybe just a little before. The projectile itself weighs in at about 165 grains and they had a 4% tungsten core called WD-74100 electric furnace steel. A little bit later, 1942, the core was changed to an alloy of manganese and molybdenum steel. And from everything I've heard and read, there was really little to no difference in penetration abilities between those two cores. I'll be using this old bolt-action rifle. This is basically a Sears-branded Remington 700 chambered in 30 6 I've put together a variety of targets. Uh, you can click here for if you want to see more details on the targets, but basically I've got steel, I've got hardened steel plate AR500, concrete, and a couple other materials. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Now in the intro to that old uh, training video that you just saw there, one of the things they show is this armor piercing round penetrating an oak tree and hitting a bucket of water on the other side. So I figured that would be a good place to start. An oak tree 12 inches thick. Now watch that bucket. Through the tree, through the bucket. That would make a pretty dead Nazi. Well, that seemed to go pretty well. Obviously those rounds have no issue penetrating a pretty substantial sized log. Let's move on. So now I'm going to try to shoot through it lengthwise. Let's find our entrance first. Right there. And I don't know, I don't think that this went through. No penetration. Let's keep moving. Well, it is an absolutely beautiful day out. Let's look at what we've done so far and then we're gonna shoot some steel. Uh, the 13 inch log shot, which did penetrate, that clocked in at 2749 feet per second. The two and a half foot log shot, which did not penetrate, clocked in at uh, 2795 feet per second. So moving on to steel, let's just talk really quickly about hardness because uh, it's kind of interesting. If we look at the Brinell hardness of materials, let's make a little chart. We'll start out at zero and top it out at a thousand. So let's start with something soft at five. This is pure lead. Lead alloys are a little higher, around 20, maybe a little higher than that. Just above aluminum at uh, about 130, this is our mild steel. Mild steel is a real generic term, so you know, don't take these numbers as super scientific. Now, um, up here, 500. This is right where our AR500 plate comes in. What about the core of our bullet here? Those are gonna clock in at a 
about 712. I had to do some conversions there, but I believe that's right. And so this is our AP core. And just for reasons of comparison, if you're looking up around uh, 735, that's what I believe an average drill bit is for hardness. So what I'm getting at here is you can see our AP core is harder than our AR500 and a lot harder than our mild steel. Um, so this might give you an idea of what's going on here. So let's go ahead and get busy. Okay, I'm going to shoot at our what I'm calling our mild steel target. It's really a bunch of unknown scraps, but I don't believe any of them are hardened. I'm just going to go for the gold. I'm going to go for the one inch slab at the bottom and see where we stand. Behind it, I've just got a box of paper and old catalogs. I like to try to catch the bullet cores sometimes just so I can look at them. I find it interesting. So I'm going to set my little camera right here and uh, hope that it doesn't get destroyed. Well, it looks like uh, I succeeded. My goal was to punch something through the one inch this year. Got it right there. Pretty good. Look at the size of that hole in comparison to some of these others. Kind of interesting, I was able to locate the core on this. I told you I had this box of paper and catalogs behind it, and it entered there, went through the next catalog, into the paper, and then it slowly moved off to the side, came out the side of the box, and about 10 feet away over here, there's the core. It's pretty amazing, it's just landed right there. This is the first time I've touched it. And look how pointy that tip is after going through an inch of steel. That's pretty amazing. I'm very pleased with this. So let's go ahead and move on to our friend over here. Just a reminder what we have here. This is one and a half inch thick steel. I'm just gonna call it mild steel. This is 3 8 inch AR500 plate and half inch AR500 plate. I'm gonna go for the inch and a half thick steel first and I really doubt that we're gonna get penetration, but what the hell, let's try. Well, just as I suspected, no penetration on that. Did get a pretty impressive hole there though. Now let's get real high tech. I've got a stick here and I'm gonna estimate, it's bulged out a little bit, but it looks like we got roughly an inch of penetration. So I'd say that uh, that's probably about the limit for this round on regular steel, is about an inch. But uh, we can't stop there. So let's go ahead and uh, throw some of this at our 3 8 inch AR500. Well, that was pretty exciting. Um, I kind of didn't expect it to go through there, but sailed right through, no problem. Um, the metal didn't bulge out at all. It's nice and flat, unlike our mild steel, which cratered. 
and on the back side same deal nice clean exit um, pretty impressive I guess there's only one place to go from here and that's over to our half inch AR500 well that was really interesting uh, it did hit really hard made a bulge on the back that I can feel chipped a little bit of paint off um, really no surprise though I really didn't expect it to go through the half inch AR500 I was hoping it would but uh, didn't really expect it I think it did a reasonable job uh, made a nice hole in the front pretty impressive there maybe you never realized what that 30 caliber of yours can do maybe you forgot well, take a look at this concrete wall. It's four inches thick. On the range, you find out that your rifle is the most accurate in the world. Now you'll see that it's got a punch to match. Anyone using that wall for cover would do it just once. At ranges up to 200 yards, armor-piercing ammunition can smash through this kind of wall any time, any day. Brother, that 30 caliber stuff is your right arm. I think I'm just going to go straight for the 8 inch thick part, the thickest part, see what happens. No penetration on the 8 inch. I wasn't really expecting it, I guess. Just a little wishful thinking. So, I guess we'll move on down to the 7. Okay, now let's make a long story short. Well, there we go. Concrete wall. We only got penetration on the 4 inch section. Now, that is what that video showed, but I was actually expecting a little bit more for some reason. Uh, maybe it's because there's so much reinforcement in this wall. You know, I didn't want to skimp on it. I wanted a real challenge for this ammo. So I made a strong wall. And here's our 4 inch section. This is the only one that we got penetration on. There's a little bit of metal in there, presumably the jacket. There's our exit. You can see, nice and round. Chipped out the back a bit. There's still some jacket wedged in there, but if you look just right, you can see the light through the hole. So, looks like four inches. Reinforced concrete is what you can expect out of these. Let's take a look at the rest of our result. We were getting speeds of, well, little over 2700 feet per second so 13 inch log penetrated two and a half foot log no penetration one inch mild steel penetrated one and a half inch mild steel not so good three eighths inch AR 500 plate yeah penetrated really really well half inch AR 500 did not penetrate, but left a pretty impressive hole or uh, crater on the front, whatever you want to call it. Concrete, I was a bit disappointed with this. Eight inch concrete, nope, seven, nope, six, five. We finally got penetration on the four inch reinforced concrete. You know, I'll take it. I guess I would have been more disappointed if it didn't penetrate any of it. So. Um, here's some real-world tests on this armor-piercing military surplus ammo. This is some pretty amazing stuff. This is 70 years old, and it's really impressive to see what this little thing can punch through. Um, I realize that my tests, I do these in my backyard, they're not ultra-scientific. 
but I really enjoy them. I like to see firsthand what this stuff can do. I like to do a little bit of homework, learn about things like the hardness of the different materials. I find all of this really fascinating, and I hope that you do too. Um, I'll tell you what, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Give me some feedback about what you thought, because I've got more videos coming up. A lot um, of different kinds of ammo is going to go through some of these same tests, and I'd love to hear your comments, your suggestions. So, um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Have more stuff coming your way. But a weapon is only as good as the man behind it. So, give them hell.